Hello again, chaps and chapettes. How are we all doing? It is lovely to see you all again, as always. Something of an observation video, really, this one, guys. About Nigel Farage, once again. Now he's not capitalising heavily against this poorly led Keir Starling government. I mean, what's it been? Two, three months now we've had a Labour government and they have been atrocious. Reform UK should be raging in the polls. But Nigel Farage is taking this little back seat, very, very, being very quiet, being very liberal, talking about values and saying how mass deportations are something of an impossibility when actually they are not. There are many countries all around the world that do deal in mass deportations. Pakistan, for number one, they have deported millions of people just in the, in the space of a short few years. Also, when you've got people like Tom Tugendhat, Kemi Badenoch and Robert Jenrick being more based than Nigel Farage, there's some problems going on somewhere. I'm not quite sure what it is. He should be championing immigration as his number one policy. He should be shouting it from the rooftops. But for some bizarre reason, I'm not quite sure what it is, he's distancing himself from it when he knows fine well that people up and down the country, a mass portion of the British public, wants gross zero migration, not one more single visa to be issued. He should have used, I know it sounds a little bit heartless, children lost their lives, children were attacked, I understand that, I am not a heartless piece of shit, but he should have done a mass rally, like an event, a gathering, over in Southport about a week or two later, once all the grieving processes started to kick in with the public, and said to them, under my leadership, under my government, this will never happen to another community ever again. His popularity would have soared. It's something Donald Trump would have done if there was a, a killing of some children, say, in, oh, I don't know, Houston, Texas, or something. About a week later, he would hold a rally there and he would champion what the hell he was going to do to stop something like that happening ever again. Like I say, the Tory leadership uh, contest that's currently going on at the minute is dominating the headlines, where Nigel Farage, Richard Tice, Reform UK, Rupert Law, all the rest of them should be top of the headlines, championing what the hell they're going to do if their government gets in. And what do we get on that GB News interview that uh, Nigel Farage did with, I can't remember his name, the name escapes me. He was ducking and diving and... Uh, avoiding curveballs that the interviewer was giving him about immigration. I'm not quite sure what's wrong with him. All his vitriol, all his uh, energy on immigration that he had in the past just seems to have dissipated. Has he lost heart? Has someone got some dirt on him and he's blackmailing him? I'm not too sure. But this isn't very good news. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen in the next general election. I mean, it's in five years' time. That's a long, long time. It's a bit too early to be um and ahhing about this kind of thing. But if Nigel doesn't pull up his socks and start dealing with the issues that really matter to the British public, it's not looking very good, and it's looking very bleak for the future of um, UK governments. I mean, we could have a Liberal Democrat coalition um, a victory next one. We just don't know, do we? That's my video, guys. Uh, yeah, like I say, just a bit of an observation, really, a bit of an opinion-based video. Do let me know what you think in comments. What's going on with Nigel Farage? Who in the hell could possibly replace him? I have no idea. There's not really any, any successor over the horizon apart from that token Muslim that he's got in the party at the moment. I'm not too sure. Let me know what you think in comments, and I'll see you in a bit. Cheers.